Earlier this year, we received an announcement trailer for a new Dragon Ball game featuring Goku, or more so Kakarot. We saw some cutscene footage of Goku fighting Piccolo, footage of him strolling around some points of interest, and other bits and pieces of cutscenes like Frieza's battle for instance. There wasn't much to talk about other than the fact that his name back then was Project Z, an action RPG. Last weekend at E3, Project Z received a name change and will now be dubbed Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. At first we got to see a brand new trailer of the Saiyan Attack Saga. Vegeta and Nappa are attacking the Earthlings and Goku comes in clutch just like the anime. It's safe to assume that this game will cover the complete Dragon Ball Z Saga from Goku's perspective, from the Saiyan Saga up until the Buu Saga. But nothing has been set in stone yet and they don't even know if Dragon Ball Super is gonna be adapted, so we'll have to wait for some more info. The game's developer is CyberConnect2, the very geniuses behind the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm series. If any of you love Naruto and have played the Ninja Storm series, you already know that CyberConnect2 can adopt Dragon Ball into a fantastic action RPG game. The cell shading is already top notch as we can see from the trailers and in a very lengthy gameplay reveal, we can see a lot of similarities of Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 1. Although that game was limited to running around and doing quests in one town, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot takes it a step farther and does this on an open world scale. As you can see by the opening act of this gameplay, the world is indeed massive. You will notice this throughout the trailer too. Let's break down the things that stand out already. The minimap shows us points of interest in a compass, shaped as a dragon radar. Very cute. To the left of the radar are 7 slots for each Dragon Ball, so I would guess you can find these like in other Dragon Ball games and summon Shenron for some kind of wish. The bottom right of the screen holds the character portrait with indicators. You can see your level, your party members and their levels, your HP bar and your stamina bar. The gameplay trailer shows us that we can fly on Nimbus or by ourselves. The left of the screen shows that each of these actions change our button commands. This will also change once our feet touch the ground. We can talk to NPCs for information and engage in battles that we need in order to complete a quest. Super dashing in the open world does cost stamina. The stamina bar is being drained by 6 every second as we can see. I am guessing this number can be reduced with skills or abilities down the line. Entering battle changes the input commands once more. The buttons on the left indicate the defensive and movement inputs such as guard, boost, burst and key charge. Underneath are action commands. Right now it says fight, which I think needs to be translated to attack, that one makes more sense. Key blast is an option and then you have the directional buttons for items. You can also activate your super attack commands. You will be indicated to press a specific phase button to perform a corresponding attack. These will probably be configurable in the menu screens. Each of these attacks have a cost linked to them and you will drain your stamina by using these. Movement costs stamina as well, but stamina does regenerate over time and by attacking. Finishing a battle will award you with a rank depending on how well you've performed and experience towards your player level. Goku also passes through a gate here that activates a set flight path during super dashing in the open world. In here you can gather Z orbs, in this sequence Goku obtained red orbs, blue orbs and let's call them rainbow orbs. This will probably be a currency for abilities and most likely items as well. And as true as any open world can be, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot also incorporates hunting and mining. We can attach a tail to our behind and catch some fishes. We can attack innocent fauna for some meat and then at a campfire we can cook it for some stat beneficial dishes. There are crystals scattered throughout the world that can be shot in first person with key blasts and ores can be gathered this way. The pause menu shows that we can interact with items and party members. Show info on characters and story, the community tab that indicates an online feature I would assume, maybe a rank system since we achieve ranks in fights. The Dragon Ball tab will probably light up once the 7 balls have been acquired and lastly, the system tab to configure our game experience. On the right you can see our Zenny amount, which would be the in-game currency. Below that are um, D coins? I don't know the name so let's go with D coins. These might be rare in-game currencies or the feared microtransaction currencies? Let's hope it's not the latter, but if it is, it could be ways to put in skins or customization options. Open world anime games often let you buy booster packs. These might be stat boosters or in-game currencies. Below the decoins are the Z orbs from earlier. Now we can see there are blue, red and green ones. This makes me think more and more about ability currencies. Blue for defensive abilities, red for offensive abilities and green for vitality. The rainbow, silver and gold ones could be used for supers and maybe party member abilities. Not much info on any of these, this is all a guess on my end and my RPG game experience. As you can see each item has different boosts or abilities. 
This large Vita drink will recover 200k HP. This is an indicator on how strong we can grow Goku. The dishes made from cooking will grant stat boosts which are permanent. In this next fight, we can finally see what support commands do. We can open the tab and see attacks available for our party members. Pressing the correct face button will have the party member execute the attack. Using it will put the party member in a cooldown, so it can only be triggered when the party member is out of cooldown. It shows us that we can have up to two party members, and each party member has two buttons to configure attacks on. At certain parts of the battle, a Z combo prompt will appear. By pressing the two upper buttons, we'll perform set combo within a cutscene-like state. As you can see, Raditz has 16 HP bars, but only 8000 HP, which, if uh, my math is correct, translates to 500 HP per bar. And underneath is a stun bar. When that bar is depleted, the opponent will be staggered and open for attacks until the bar is refilled. Interestingly, right here, Raditz's HP was reset, while yours wasn't and Piccolo was not here in the fight. It's this part in the fight where Goku and Piccolo went in separately. The movement in this state is probably the stepping action. You can dodge left and right to avoid incoming attacks. And during battle, when dealing or receiving damage, the tension gauge is filled. It's that bar to the right of your portrait. Once that is full and you hold the key charge when stamina is full, you enter Surge. This will give you a blue aura and a power boost that activates destructive hits. But be careful, the opponent can also go into Surge since he too receives and deals damage. In that case, it's important to guard. And that was basically it that this gameplay trailer has shown us. I hope I didn't miss much and informed you well enough to hype you up for this game's release. Tell me in the comments what your favorite part of this reveal was. Mine was the fact you can hunt and harvest ores. That woke my inner hoarder up. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more Dragon Ball action. I will surely cover this game before it comes out and when it drops, so I hope to catch you in the next one.